Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to Not Perfect Zen. I hope you're having an awesome day. Um, this is Sunday for me. It's sunny but cold outside, but it's been a good day, and I'm happy to be here with you again. Um, I have on my previous couple of Sunday videos been showing you one or two tangles from this uh, challenge that I've been doing called 100 Days of Tangling, and that is part of the Tangle All Around Facebook group. Um, I'm not going to use any of these patterns today, but I did put a post in the community part of my YouTube channel if you're interested and I gave links to the patterns that do have step outs available. Some of these are on Pinterest and some of them are only available in the Facebook group. Uh, but I shared what I could and um, check it out if you have time. <laughs> uh, one of the things I've done lately and I think I showed this before, was I saw a challenge called Tangle Your Name. And I was looking for patterns for my last name, my maiden name, which is Buford, B-U-F-O-R-D. And I found some that I wanted to use, but nothing to make a full tile. And um, what I did do was this in my sketchbook. And so I want to show you these patterns. This is Buttercup. This one is called Reticulated. And this one back here is Facet. And these are the people that de deconstructed those patterns. And it's a fun but easy group of patterns, and I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, going to be using a Zentangle three and a half inch tile. I have two different pins, a Micron PN and a Micron 01. I have a Zentangle graphite pencil. You can use any paper, pen, or pencil that you have. Um, also have a blending stump, also known as a tortillon. And I had a question from my last video because I forgot to mention why I have a paper clip stuck inside. If you can see the tip on this one, let me zoom in just a little bit. Um, the tip on this one is kind of pushed down, and that's because sometimes I get a little bit too aggressive with my shading. And if I want a better point, then I take this and put it inside, and you can see that tip come back out. And I just have a habit of keeping the paper clip in there so I don't have to go looking for it. Okay, so that and occasionally I will use my kneaded eraser. And I think I zoomed in a little bit too much. It's come out a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be just a classic Zentangle tile. And so I am going to start with gratitude and appreciation. I'm just very grateful to be feeling up to doing this. I feel better every day. Um, just recently in the last month finished uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Luckily it was only six weeks and so I'm very grateful for that. I'm feeling much better and I'm so happy to feel good enough to be doing some videos for you today. Um, we are going to start with four corner dots. And I'm going to make mine fairly even because I'm going to do this uh, 
background border. So I'm going to make kind of a straight line. Doesn't have to be perfect. But I'm making it fairly straight. Okay, and then my string is going to be an X, kind of a curved X that comes across. And so it doesn't have to be perfectly curved. And let's just go ahead and do two of these because this is going to be our ribbon. And I can straighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to have one that comes from the other side. So basically the same thing. Give it a slight curve. And then I'm going to echo that curve. And bring it across this way. All right, and I don't care that these don't match. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and fill in one of these ribbons. So let's start with this one. And to begin with, I'm using my Micron PN because I want to put kind of a dark border on this. Okay, now if these lines bother you, you can erase them. And I'm going to go ahead and just lightly erase that. Remember, this is your art. Zentangle pencils don't come with erasers because there's no mistakes. And I erase the lines just so I'm not thinking about them so much. And I'm gonna start with Buttercup. And again, this is from Sandy Steen Bartholomew, and it came out in 2012. I like making note of when these patterns came out. It just kind of helps me. I like using old and new patterns. Okay, so for this ribbon, we're going to make squares. Okay. Remember to always relax your shoulders, relax your hand. And for this buttercup, we're going to put orbs in the center of each of these. You could do each flower before you go putting the orb in the square, but I just like doing it this way. It's not very big. And this one would probably be about right there. Okay. So for these petals, she almost makes a square. But you can give it a little bit of a tip. I like doing that. So let's start on this one. And we're just going to go into that corner. Come around and back down. Let me zoom in a little for you. And I will try to keep my hand out of the way and keep it on the screen. All right, so come up and back. We're putting four on here. They don't have to be perfectly the same. And then this one will go off that way and off that way. And then we're just going to fill that in. You can come back and do it later. And this does take a little time. But 
use this as just a way to relax. I used to not enjoy filling in like that, but I do now. I really do enjoy it. Try to appreciate and enjoy every step, every line. Okay, so see how these are kind of square. And I tend to turn my tile. That one, <laughs> a little bit funky and that's okay. We're not looking for perfect. We're looking for relaxation. Um, keep in mind, I don't fast forward on my video. If I'm going too slow or too fast, please use the YouTube speed um, adjustment and you can make it faster or slower and you can move forward uh, past all this <laughs> if you need to. Okay. And as you can see, I just kind of tend to do whatever I think I want to do as far as um, filling it in as I go along. Your little um, petals we're putting a line inside each one. And I found that mine look a little bit better if I give them a little bit of a curve. Okay. So we're just going to keep adding these squarish petals. Turn your tile to keep your hand comfortable. This is a Simple but bold ribbon. I really enjoy doing this one. And it's really pretty in a grid also. Um, all of these patterns can be found on tanglepatterns.com. And I'm trying to go not too terribly slow. So if there's part of this that's not filled in, I'll go back and touch that up later. I don't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> so as far as my progress after chemotherapy, I have not had a follow-up appointment yet, so I'll go back in early February, but the only real issues I'm having now is that I'm still losing my hair. Hopefully I don't lose it all, but if I do, it's okay. It'll come back. And I'm tired, so I'm trying to do a little bit of <coughs> exercises each day. Okay. Okay. Sorry about my dog. All right. Okay, again, you can just fill these in as you go along, or you can come back and fill them in after you get all your petals done. I think it's kind of fun to see the progress as I go along.
Okay, and again, we're filling these in. Yeah, my dog usually stays in the room with me, wherever I'm at. <laughs> and we'll generally take a nap while I'm recording, but uh, any noise or any dog walking outside definitely gets her going. Oops, sorry. I have done some tiles where everything I did was a ribbon, and that was fun. I do try to find ideas that, uh, for right now, most of my ideas focus around just having a nice morning meditation with patterns that I enjoy. And patterns like this that are easy to follow and easy to duplicate are my favorites. Very relaxing to me. Okay, almost done with this part. Okay, try not to overthink it. When I do, <laughs> I do weird things. So some of these have uh, funny points but that's okay. We're not looking for perfect. We're just looking to relax and create beautiful art. Okay, so we're only gonna see part of these. There's our center. Ah, oh, what have I done? Okay, wasn't thinking, I was too busy talking, so no mistakes. We'll just fill that one in and pretend that we wanted to do that. No mistakes. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is put an aura on here. So I am pointing my pencil my pen, I'm sorry, toward the line that I want to aura. That makes it easier for me, okay? Doesn't make it straight, but it does make it look a little better. Okay, now on this side, just lightly pulling my hand toward me. Okay, so there is Buttercup. And now we're gonna come across this way. So I'm gonna, you could do this however you wanted to. You can follow that line or do a different one. I'm gonna come this way, just so I have a little bit more over here and then this way. And then our second side. Going across. And you can go ahead and put your aura. And this ribbon is going under our other one. I'm going to turn and aura this side. Just 
don't worry about having straight lines. Okay, like I did before, I'm just gonna remove that. And the second one that we're gonna do here is called Reticulated by Livia Chua. And like I say, I, I like to put the dates down and this one was done in 2011, or it was published in 2011 on the Tangle Patterns website. And this one is really easy. I'm gonna have to start on this side. And all we're gonna do is put these bumps, you could call them a half moon. Okay, we'll just go ahead and start here. And then this one's gonna go off, all right? Now we're gonna come back and add another little moon inside, half moon, and fill that in. And this is another ribbon that's easy to remember, easy to do. And we're just filling in these little half moons. And when I have a lot of filling in to do, that's when I like to use the PN because it has the PN stands for plastic nib. And when I'm filling in like this, it's kind of rough on the fine point pens like the 01. Oops. Came up a little high, that's okay. All right, this one's going a little bit faster than the first one, so that's good. Sometimes I do find that my pen kind of stops working when I've been in the same spot for a long time, so I just kind of turn it a little bit and then start again, and that seems to help. So that's just a little tip that might help you. Again, where these aren't totally filled in, I'm gonna come back later and make that better. Okay, so the next thing that we do on this is just add these lines across. And you can make these as close together or far apart as you would like. I'm trying to make them about the same distance apart as I go across. I have a habit of not going down to touch the next line, so. I need to watch where I'm going with my pen and stop on that line instead of next to it, which tends to be my habit. Okay. Remember to Relax your shoulders, <sighs> breathe, <laughs> enjoy what you're doing.
Okay. So now we have our two ribbons. And like I did here, now I'm going to ink in my border and then we'll do facet. So start here and I'm still using my PN. Just follow the line that you initially put down for your border. If you need to adjust it a little bit, now is the time to do it. I think this one's fine. Okay, so now we're going to do facet. And the thing about facet is... Uh, Lynn also has one called Facet 2. Okay, so what we're going to do today is Facet. And both of these are done in a triangle. And with Facet, we put a triangle inside a triangle. Okay, again, stop on the line instead of next to it. Another triangle, okay? And then we just keep going like that. And when you have your triangles inside, then we're gonna connect these points. Go point to point. They're not always a perfectly straight line, so go point to this point to this point. If it's a little bit jagged, that's okay. So this one is facet. Okay, she also has a variation of that pattern called facet two, which is F A S S E T T O O. Now, this one is not on the Tangle Patterns website, but uh, you can find it by doing a search, and it will take you to Lynn's website. Okay, I have switched to my Micron 01 just because it's easier for me to do these finer lines. Okay, with Facet 2... You put a straight line across, and then another line, another line, and then we go inside again, this way, so you just keep adding these lines inside. So, as I'm doing this, if you would prefer to do facet two, please do it. But I am going to do facet on the other side, okay? So, all we need for facet is triangles. So let's go to this section. And it's okay that this is a little bit curved. And let's just put this line in here for our triangle. Now we have two triangles. And then we're going to start adding triangles inside. We're not looking for perfect. I do want to kind of keep the lines somewhat the same distance apart. But if they're not, it's okay. And then when you finish, just go from line to line to line to corner, okay? So here, here, and here. So see, that wasn't exactly a straight line. If you go tip to tip to tip, it works out fine. Okay, inside here. Okay. 
and just turn your tile however it is makes it easiest for you to do this. You could put a tiny one inside, but I'm not going to. Connect your tips or your triangle, your points. Okay, so there you go. Let's put a triangle here. Now this one, hmm. With that corner, let's go here. How about here? And a tiny triangle there. Just fit them however you can. So this one is gonna be small. If you prefer to keep the triangles a little bit bigger, that's fine. Always remember this is your art. And do what makes you happy. And I really enjoy doing this tile, so that's why I wanted to share it with you. I have several different playlists on my channel. Um, I started doing 102 Tangles of Zentangle, and I have not finished <laughs> all of those, but um, I'll get back to it. Again, I find that it's easiest for me to do a video of a tile that I've really had fun with. And hopefully I can show you something that you will also enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna put a tiny triangle in the center there. Okay, now collect, connect your points. This is just such a fun pattern to use to fill in spaces. I'm gonna make this one long. Before I went into um, my cancer treatment, I had a bad habit of first thing in the morning, I would get on Facebook and Instagram, and actually probably the last thing at night, and just scroll through looking at what other people had done. And most likely <laughs> worrying and comparing and thinking, oh, I wish I could do that. You know, just don't. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, let's come across this way. And this way. And this way. So we're just making random triangles. And then, like I say, just deep breaths, <clears throat> relax your shoulders. You know, take time to just exercise your hand a little bit. Okay, connect the points on your triangle. 
Okay. So anyway, um, for 2024, when I started feeling good enough to do my Zentangle practice each morning, I decided to only put on some easy listening music and do my Zentangle practice before looking on social media. And I've really enjoyed it. And I would encourage you to try a daily Zentangle practice, even if it's only practicing one little pattern. And that's the reason I'm doing the 100 days of tangling. So the first thing that I do is the pattern for the day. And that has been really good. So for 100 days, I plan to keep doing that. Okay. Let's do a triangle here. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> I uh, apologize for the background noise, if you can hear it. Some of the kids in our neighborhood got a little four-wheeler that they drive through the neighborhood, and it scares me because they go around the block so fast. And I just hope that they stay safe. I know it's fun. When I was a kid, we used to occasionally go to what they call go-kart park. And that was a lot of fun. So I know that they are really enjoying it, but it scares me. That somebody could be driving around the corner and not see them in time. Anyway, if you can hear that, <laughs> that's what it is. All right, I hope you're staying with me and I'm not putting you to sleep. Again, you can fast forward, you can slow it down, you can speed it up through the YouTube controls. The other thing I don't do anymore, I tried a couple of times, to put music in my video. And one time I, I didn't realize how loud it was. But I've had a couple of people who contacted me to say that they can't focus on what I'm doing and listen to music at the same time. And I do know that there's a couple of videos that I've tried to watch that uh, occasionally I can't even hear what the person is saying. So it's just easiest for me to, and for you, if I don't put music, you're welcome to put your own music on and follow along. All right. We've done it. All right, there you go. 
So there's facet, buttercup, and reticulated. Now we're going to do shading. And I'm going to start with these flowers. And I'm just going to put a little bit of graphite around the center. We're going to have enough shading on the rest of this that this doesn't need a lot. So just a little bit around the center. And then we're going to take our tortillon or blending stump and then just go around that. Actually, I put too much of a point on there. I had to push it back down. Okay. Because it was beginning to fold. Okay, just keep around that just softly spread it out okay now the next thing I want to do is put shading on the outside of the aura that I put on that ribbon. Okay. Same thing on the other side. And it's on top of this one. It's like it's going over it. So I'm going to go ahead and Put that graphite on top. And I'm putting it down kind of heavy because we do want it to show up. And then just come back and soften that edge. Okay, same thing on this side. Well, if you can see, the tip of that is bending. I'm going to put it aside and get a different one, okay? And not push it out so far. Okay, and then come along. And again, just soften that. Okay, and then it looks like it's floating up above that other one. So down here on this one, I'm going to put some graphite on the edge of these little moons. Half moons. Reminds me of the crescent moon pattern. Okay, and then also on the inside here, just a little bit. I kind of questioned whether or not I wanted to use this pattern just because it was so many more straight lines, but <laughs> I couldn't decide what else I wanted to do. So, go ahead and use this one. It gives you an idea of what you can do on a tile. And then you can use other patterns, other ribbons. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just softening that edge. Okay, now just like we did on this one, I'm going to go to this R line and add shading all the way across. And I'm trying to not go inside that aura. And then same thing here. You know, another thing I like about some of these older patterns is that they are non-representational. I know this kind of looks like a flower, but I'm not trying to draw a bouquet or trees or anything specific. I'm just enjoying these results. And enjoying my morning tangling with these older patterns. Okay, so now we have those done. And all I'm going to do on facet is put a little bit of graphite on these lines. That was a little bit smeared, but it's okay. And I'm trying to not do that center triangle, but I just did it. <laughs> if I start trying to think of what I'm gonna say next, then I tend to um, forget what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm also putting the graphite on that outside border. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my blending stump and just soften those edges. Kind of make them go out a little bit if you want. But another thing, if you're able to keep these inside triangles the same size, uh, you could actually darken them. Okay, and then soften that outside edge. See how that really makes it start standing out? Okay, again, we're just following these lines. And I'm trying to not fill in that center triangle, but if you do, it's okay. And I goofed a little bit there, but we'll just blend it out. When I first started taking Zentangle classes, a few of the artists who were in that class were very good at what they did. And I uh, felt kind of intimidated. Okay, I am actually gonna erase part of that 
just because it made it too dark. Uh, and I ended up making myself a sign <laughs> to put on the front of my notebook. And it said, you know, this is not a contest. You're not being graded. Just enjoy drawing one line at a time. And, you know, that's what you see at the beginning of my videos. And it's a reminder to me and a reminder to you to just enjoy drawing. And this is the 20th anniversary of when Zentangle started teaching classes. And uh, I'm just so grateful for Zentangle in my life. It's really made a difference in my confidence and what I do on a daily basis. I have met people around the world and I just love it. All right, there we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. And again, you can do any ribbon back here. You can, I'll go back in and fill in some of these spots where I went kind of fast, but uh, there you go. Add your chop. Let's see, where's the top? Doesn't really matter. Hmm, I actually like it this way. Turn it the way you like it. Again, it's non-representational. And I think I'll put my chop over here. Some people like to hide their chop inside their art, but that takes planning. <laughs> uh, sign it and date it on the back. Write down your patterns, and here are the pattern names and the people that deconstructed them. And if you put this on social media, I would appreciate if you would tag me because I'd love to see what you've done. All right, thanks again for joining me. If you enjoyed this, I would ask you to please take just a minute to hit the like button uh, leave me a comment, share with others, because I love reading your comments. That just makes me feel so good. It's always so awesome. All right. Thanks again. I will see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.